the rim. Rich Paul had something to say about the bubble discourse about a week and a half ago that I didn't have time to address. I was out of town, then 2K came out, fell by the wayside, and still I wanted to make a video about it because, well, a couple of reasons. The bubble is rapidly aging. We're about to hit the three year mark if we haven't already. And everything that is currently said about the bubble about the return of basketball when we got it are things that i said were going to take place before i ever had a clue who was gonna win there's videos there's multiple videos i have about it on this channel on my second channel and here we are in the year 2023 of our lord acting surprised about the discourse because the lakers and lebron james won it so i've got to get this video off today which has been made possible by the sponsor DraftKings. the season has officially kicked off and i've got some crazy action for you in week two my partners over at DraftKings are giving all of the NFL fans out there an insane offer for this week. All new customers can bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets. You heard it correctly. New customers that bet just $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. DraftKings customers can also get more skin in the game with same game parlays. There you can combine multiple bets from the same game for a shot at even bigger payouts. If sports betting isn't available in your state yet, you can still get in on the action with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and new customers that use promo code DOM2K and bet just $5 on any wager will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code DOM2K. 2K only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Can we please be serious for a second, or just the duration of this video at least? The NBA bubble was always going to be discredited. This may seem like a random time for that statement, unless you were hip to Rich Paul doing his media rounds recently discussing how if Steph had have won it, nobody would have said anything. I've mostly ignored narratives surrounding the bubble because A, it's a discussion with a thousand agendas that's mostly just disingenuous chatter. B, in my eyes, if you win, you win. That goes for the 99 Spurs title, 2012 Heat, 2015 Warriors winning in six games, although Cleveland was down two stars. At the end of the day, your name is forever printed in the history books and no matter how much anyone kicks, tosses, or screams, that's just gonna be that. Now, does that mean I view every title equally? Absolutely not. There's degrees of difficulty to a championship, each with their own extenuating circumstances. Sometimes you win a chip because you were totally expected to, and it doesn't even mean as much to the people involved as it would otherwise. See Bob Myers' comments on the Warriors 2018 title. Sometimes you win one that was agonizing, and it sticks out in history as one of the more respected ones. See Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavs. So where does that leave the 2020 bubble championship? Now that we're almost exactly three years removed, it's still a heavily discussed topic. Some have called it the hardest title ever won because of the extended isolation, the fact that there was nothing to focus on outside of basketball, and the out-of-body experience certain players were having that wouldn't be reproduced in a normal setting. Others argue to discredit it because of some of those same circumstances. No fans in the building completely diluting the playoff atmosphere that literally makes the postseason what it is. The extended break that affected certain players differently. The overall open gym run feel that it had to it. Regardless of where you stand with it, I'm just here to argue that Rich Paul is wrong. Especially with the example he used. Steph Curry? Are you actually being serious? As much love as he might seem to get, he is absolutely one of the more polarizing figures in sports, and to just pretend there wouldn't be a camp out there making these same arguments they make against the Lakers? That is disingenuous at best. I also disagree with Rich because one of the main arguments I had against bringing basketball back in the midst of the pandemic was that people would never view that type of championship equally. Yes, despite the fact that I don't argue to bring the Lakers title down today, everything I said would happen with this discussion three years later has absolutely happened, and that was before I had any clue who would win it. It could have been my Celtics at the time. I'll tag the link to the video I made back then where I essentially said that the circumstances would make it impossible to appeal to the masses in the long run run and that I really didn't see the point in coming back to play an AAU tournament brand of hoops to crown an NBA champion. So I will admit, I'm very happy they brought basketball back for that time, we needed it, and it turned out phenomenal for the most part. Even knowing that though, as it pertains to an actual champion, let's have a few chats. Starting with the teams, I need you to turn your brain
brain back to how you thought about the Miami Heat and Denver Nuggets back in 2020. This argument is much harder to make today seeing as how they literally just finished an NBA Finals in the outside world, but again, I'm taking you back to 2020. We viewed these teams in a totally different light. The Miami Heat were a squad that few believed were really an NBA Finals team yet, it wasn't that far removed from Jimmy Butler being discussed as one of the worst offseason signings somehow, and they were fresh off of what was deemed as an upset of the Milwaukee Bucks who were in their second year of legitimate title expectations. Long story short, the 2020 Heat making the NBA Finals was a possibility before the season got cut, but not an overwhelmingly likely one that people would safely bet on. As far as the Nuggets, the world was still being introduced to them. Nikola Jokic had not won an MVP yet as fans were still figuring out how good he really was and they had just been upset by a Blazers team the year before in the second round after being a second seed. This was at a time when a quiet sector of fans were trying to sell the world on this upcoming team, causing them to look like pretenders because nobody ever believed in the Blazers. The trade dame chance had already started by then. I say all this to say, getting the Miami Heat and Denver Nuggets in the 2020 NBA Finals was a joke compared to how we view it today. If I could compare it, it'd be fairly similar to if we just gotten, I don't know, the Kings and Cavs this June. In a couple of years, that really might make sense. Today, that's premature. So, okay, now imagine today's Kings and Cavs make the NBA Finals, but it's in a bubble environment. I want to know who genuinely believes that series and winner doesn't get discredited. That series would be laughed out of Disney the same exact way anyone would have done the Heat and Nuggets in 2020. I'm using them as one hypothetical to show why I'm not buying what Rich Paul is selling. Because I saw these conversations coming way back then, and I just do not believe this group can't come to see how anyone would have gotten these narratives. None of this is to say that LeBron isn't held to a different standard. At the end of the day, that's what Rich was getting at, I believe. And yes, that's true. He is held to the GOAT standard that he himself has set in the media multiple times. That goes from entering the league with a chosen one tattoo, calling himself the best player in the world unprovoked in interviews, and also calling himself the greatest of all time unprovoked. You should feel like you're the greatest, so it's okay, but when your media mouthpieces have to run through different mediums complaining about the standards while using unserious talking points, it's just not that good of a look to me. Still, I'll give you this one. If the Miami Heat would've won in 2020, oh yeah, they would've been on Braun and the Lakers' heads crazy for losing that. For a couple of reasons, I might add. Once again, the 20 20 Miami Heat were one of those teams that nobody took all the way seriously until they did. Even with that, they weren't expected to beat the Lakers because of it, and it would have been the second time LeBron lost as the favorite. That means in a world where the Heat upset the Lakers in the bubble, yeah, I see LeBron getting cooked, the Heat getting praised for upsetting multiple teams, yet still some acknowledgement that these were not normal circumstances and that they never had to win a road game in Staples Center per se. Speaking of which, that relates to an event that directly impacts the view of 2020. Do you recall the Nuggets coming back from two 3-1 deficits in consecutive series? Do you know how many times that's happened in history? Never. None. And there's a reason for that. One does not simply just come back down 3-1. I mean, they do, but barely. It's only happened 13 times in history, and five of those have come since 2015, so the modern era. It's not a disrespectful thing to the Nuggets, but I cannot in good faith argue that in a normal playoff setting, they overcome that feat to the Jazz in round one, and then immediately run that same script back against the Clippers with game seven on the road. I can be convinced they would have done one of those in the real world. Both. Again, there's a reason it didn't happen until the playoff atmosphere was subtracted from the equation. So you look at this and say, yes, there was a champion that will always be a champion crowned in the NBA bubble. Still, when you just think about all the weird things that happen, there needs to be some acceptance that for a lot of fans, it's just never going to be looked at the same, very much like how nobody talks about the 99 Spurs championship. When do you ever hear anybody praising that title? It was a dramatically short season, the Knicks were not that impressive of an opponent for an NBA Finals, then Tim Duncan and the Spurs won multiple titles that were much better than that one. The same way LeBron has titles that are better than 2020. The same way that Steph, in Rich Paul's hypothetical scenario, would also have titles that people would rank higher. Long story short, if you get the Celtics winning in 2020, who've actually not even won one afterwards, people would say, oh look, that squad hasn't won a damn thing in the real world. Imagine the Heat winning 2020 and still losing 2023. They'd get that same treatment. It's okay to feel like the bubble was hard and rank it where you rank it, but for Rich Paul and anyone who agrees, just please be serious. 
Winning that title was a setup from the beginning. They'd have found a way to trash anybody who wanted. I agree that LeBron just being the figure that he is hears more noise than the regular player like Jimmy Butler would. That's where I would advise you to listen out for the next time that he wins one, if there is a next time. I guarantee there will be some mention that he wanted to get it done in purple and gold in a regular setting, which should then in turn set the record straight that he hears the chatter and actually takes it somewhat seriously. And yes, there is a difference. Skip Bayless has been infinite chatter throughout his entire career. LeBron and LeBron's camp have acknowledged him a grand total of zero times. Rich Paul is not only out here talking about this three years later, he's dragging Steph into it. And he could have for sure used a better example. 